Hey guys, welcome to a new video. I have a nice and relaxed laid back one for you today. It is tea time and today we are going to talk about sewing. So I have my cup of tea here. If you would like to join me, you are very welcome to. I am having herbal tea from Ikea, the mint and cocoa kind. Sewing has become a much more prominent part of my online presence <laughs> and part of my personal life as well, I must say. It's a new hobby I discovered about a year and a half ago. And then as the pandemic hit and we were stuck at home, I was able to dedicate a lot of time to it. I thought that is what we would talk about today. So I sent out one of those question stickers on Instagram as always, and you guys sent in questions that you have and I'm gonna go over those and yeah we're just gonna have a nice little chat about sewing. Oh this sounds like a good one to start with. So when and why did you start sewing? So I originally started sewing like the first things I ever made were as a child I would make clothes from my Barbie dolls. They were like the simplest things. I would make a dress out of an old sock, things like that. Started making actually wearable things as a teenager. I think I was 15, 16. I had a very alternative clothing style back then and the clothes that I wanted to wear were either very hard to find or extremely expensive, usually both, honestly. So I decided to go ahead and try making my own. Didn't really know how to use a sewing machine back then. So I sewed most of what I did by hand. Clothing wasn't that great. I had no idea what I was doing. I did have a lot of fun with it. I really enjoyed doing it and I did wear some of the pieces sometime. I think I made maybe four clothing items and then I lost interest again. But then a year and a half ago, as I mentioned, I uh, suddenly felt an itch again to do something to start creating but i do have to be honest here and say that i was heavily influenced by all of the lovely ladies on youtube here who do sewing content um especially the costumers who make beautiful beautiful historical costumes i love watching those videos and i know you guys do as well so those definitely awoke that itch within me to start sewing again and around that same time i got a sponsorship opportunity with skillshare and i thought it was a really nice idea for that sponsorship to learn a new skill so i decided to you know try and follow a sewing tutorial on skillshare and i did that i made a pinafore dress i filmed the whole thing and that was kind of my first real garment that i made that is kind of what i consider my first uh the first thing i, I sewed yeah. <laughs> and since then, pretty much everything I've made has been recorded on YouTube. So you can see my entire journey and learning process on here in my sewing playlist. How slash where do you begin? I have an entire video on tips, my top tips for beginner sewers. I know many people suggest to start by making something simple like a pillowcase or a pencil case or something like that. But I don't know if that's just me, but to me, a pillowcase and a pencil case are very uninspiring projects. And I strongly suggest making your first project something that you're actually excited about. So for example, my first project was a pinafore dress and I think that was actually a really good beginner's project because it was completely made out of triangles. No, not triangles. Wow. Rectangles. <laughs> so all I had to do was stitch straight lines. It didn't require any special seams or anything like that. Just straight basic stitches and I was able to make the entire garment out of that. Even though it's maybe a little bit more time consuming and involves a few more steps than a pillowcase, the actual sewing itself is not more complicated. You will end up with a beautiful wearable garment that you can be proud of and show off and that is much more exciting. You keep that inspiration and that enthusiasm alive. Do you have a dream project that feels too big now but you think you can work up to? Oh yes, I have several dream projects but I think on top of the list is something that I have dreamed of since I was little and that is Elizabeth Swan's wedding dress. <laughs> Probably very cheesy, but when I saw that thing, it was the most gorgeous thing I had ever seen, the most beautiful dress ever. I have always said that my kind of top goal is to sew my own 18th century gown. I have always wanted to own one, but they are insanely expensive to buy, obviously, because there's a lot of work that goes into them and not many people know how to make them. So that is my ultimate dream project and then very specifically, the 18th century gown that I'm most excited to make is Elizabeth Swan's wedding dress. Not for my own wedding, by the way, just to clarify. <laughs> Any tips for buying fabric online? So I have bought 
the majority of my fabric online since we've been in lockdown for the past months and honestly guys i don't think i have any golden tips here it's very hit or miss always when buying fabric online the way i do it is i usually have a project in mind first that i'm buying fabric for so i know usually pretty well what i'm looking for so say i am looking for forest green linen i will literally um type into Google, buy forest green linen or buy linen and see what pops up. I will look for a forest green linen that is the closest in color to what I'm looking for or that looks like good quality and that isn't too expensive. So I'll usually try to find the cheapest one or the second to cheapest one. <laughs> and sometimes a wonderful fabric arrives, sometimes something arrives and it's completely different like this fabric, for example, that I'm wearing right here. This was supposed to be a brownish color yeah, it's not a brownish color, but you know, it happens. If there are any stores that you usually buy your fabric at and they have an online store, and that's always a safe bet, of course, to order from them. I do know that some fabric stores, some online fabric stores, offer this service where they will match a thread and any uh, notions that you use. So for example, some will match the zipper color to your fabric. So that is a great way to ensure that you at least get matching items because that can be very hard to tell when you're ordering online. Which item you made are you the most proud of? I don't know. I'm actually, I'm pretty proud of nearly everything I've made uh, besides the ones that I feel like were definite failures. <laughs> but I am very proud of my self-drafted dresses. So the ones that I made without a pattern and I especially love green cottage core dress that I made last summer. That is definitely among my top favorites out of everything I've made. Also the autumn dress, the plaid autumn dress that I made. Those two are definitely among my favorites. I wear those loads. But also of course my winter coat. But I for some reason and this is probably a personal issue of mine. I'm always less proud of things I've made following a pattern because I feel like I didn't really make it, which makes no sense at all. Please don't feel like that if you sew as well. But I do have to say I'm very proud of my winter coat as well. I love the way that turned out. People actually compliment me on the street. That never happens. <laughs> do you have certain things you prefer doing on each machine you have, such as buttonholes? So I currently own two sewing machines. If you don't know, I own my beautiful vintage sewing machine and a brand new um, computerized sewing machine. So basically my old machine only does straight stitches. It can stitch forward and backwards and that is it. It can't do anything else. So anything that requires more than just straight stitches, I need to use the other machine or do it by hand. I do actually prefer to use my vintage machine for all of those straight stitches, so I will usually do the bulk of my sewing on that machine and then just use the new machine for all the special stitches, just because I feel like the old machine is much sturdier and uh, I feel like maybe the new machine will last longer if I use the old one for all the, you know, heavy duty <laughs> stuff. I need help picking fabrics. I am brand new and it's so intimidating. Yes, I can understand that. I am still intimidated by fabric myself. Honestly, oftentimes I will just buy something that I think is pretty and just roll with it. That is, in my opinion, the best way to learn anything. Just get it, work with it, see how it works, um, see if there's anything you like and dislike about it. But if you want some guaranteed easy fabrics, then I would suggest going for woven cotton or linen because it doesn't stretch. It is not too prone to fraying. I think the easiest fabric to work with, mid-weight, woven cotton and linen. Will you make another winter coat next winter too? Do I smell an annual tradition? I don't know guys, um, I loved making the winter coat and I loved the result, but it was so expensive. <laughs> Even though it is handmade, that is the most expensive coat I own right now and I'm not sure I can do that every year, spend that much on a single item of clothing. And also, I don't know how many winter coats I need. On the other hand, I enjoyed it so much, I am not sure that I will be able to contain myself and maybe I will. We'll have to see by the time next winter rolls around. <laughs> oh, this is a nice question that ties into what I just said. Is sewing clothing more expensive than buying clothes? I think that very much depends on what you're sewing, the material you use, and what clothing you normally buy. Obviously, a t-shirt from Primark is going to be far less expensive than making your own t-shirt no matter what you sew it with and most of those really inexpensive fast fashion chains will have clothing that will probably come out cheaper than if you were to make your own however 
if you want to buy clothing that has been ethically made, that is made out of good materials under good conditions, that is usually much more expensive than fast fashion. And if that is what you usually buy or if that is your preference, in that case, sewing yourself is definitely less expensive. And honestly, depending on the material you buy, I think most of the things that I've sewn are less expensive than the your kind of mid-range fast fashion events like Zara prices. I usually try and buy my fabrics at a maximum of 15 euros a meter and I can usually easily get a garment out of two meters max. So most garments um, that I have made cost around 30 euros in uh, material, especially considering that I am making clothing that isn't necessarily mainstream. Um, it's different than what you would find in stores and clothing like this usually tends to be more expensive as well. So in my specific case, it, I come out way cheaper than if I were to buy similar clothing online. But even if it wasn't less expensive, but more expensive in the end, I do think it's worth it, you know, just even if it's just to avoid the whole fast fashion thing and to be able to choose your own materials. So it all depends on where your priorities lie, I guess. What are the best clothing items to sew for beginners? I would definitely say skirts. Skirts are usually super easy, straightforward, um, but there are loads of patterns out there, sewing patterns that are labeled easy or beginner. And honestly, I think any of those, you just have to get started somewhere. I was a beginner myself until very recently and I just jumped in at the deep end and you know, you have to learn how to swim. <laughs> Most patterns come with very clear instructions on what you should do and if they're unclear or there's uh, some terminology that you don't understand, you can always look up a tutorial online. You will figure it out in the end. So just get started somewhere and I'm sure it'll be fine. What is the one sewing thing you hate doing and skip if you can? This is, I, I'm very bad with this. Anything that isn't visible <laughs> from the outside in the end result. So all of my dresses that are made from a pattern or just everything in general that's made from a pattern is always beautifully finished, perfectly done. But all of my handmade dresses like that I made uh, without a pattern, exposed seams on the inside, no lining inside anywhere. <laughs> I just want it to look pretty and be done as soon as possible. Uh, I'm a very instant gratification type of person. I want it to be pretty immediately. And when it is, I just can't be bothered with lining and things like that. But I'm sure that'll come with time as I learn, you know, how to actually do those things a little bit better. Favorite part of sewing. I guess that moment when you see it coming together, when you see your vision being transformed from just an idea into something that is actually there and you can touch and you can wear and then being able to wear it and just feeling so proud that this is something you've made and it is completely exactly your taste and that just oh that is an amazing feeling slowly but surely a larger and larger part of my wardrobe is self-made and my wardrobe is so my taste now it is incredible because i am able to make um, exactly what I want to wear. And that is just the best feeling ever. How do you know what sewing machine to buy? So honestly, if you're just starting out, I would, if you, if you can, if you have the option, try borrowing a sewing machine from someone, just so you get a little bit of a feel for the actual act of sewing. See if it is something you actually enjoy doing because a sewing machine is a pretty big investment and I think it would be a waste to buy a sewing machine and then never use it again. So if it's at all possible, I would put off buying a machine until you are absolutely certain and know what you're looking for in a machine, what functions you tend to use. And then when you are ready to buy, um, try and think of your kind of ideal goal projects. What is your sewing goal? What, where would you eventually like to be in your sewing journey? And what would you need once you are there? Again, this is a big investment and you want to make sure that it is durable, that it lasts, and that you can still enjoy your sewing machine five, 10 years down the line. You know, if you're just starting out, then honestly, a sewing machine that does straight stitches, zigzag stitches is pretty much all you need, but I, do you think it's a waste to spend a couple hundred euros on that and then have to buy a new better one a couple of years later? How do you stay so calm when things don't go to plan? Um, I don't honestly, I just don't film my breakdowns. <laughs> when things go wrong, I need to turn off the camera, stop sewing, put everything away, cool down, calm down. And then next day I'm able to come back laugh about it and try and fix it. But I do definitely get into those moods where I'm just like, you know what, never mind. I'm just gonna throw the whole thing out. It's never gonna work. 
<laughs> and it's all been for nothing. So yeah, just allow myself a little bit of time to get over that. What really helps for me, but I don't think that's a very useful tip for you guys. I usually do my sewing for a video and I'm usually on a deadline. I have to finish the garment by the deadline, so... Yeah, that is, um, it does actually really help. I think I would have abandoned more projects if I didn't sew for a part of my job, I guess. What do you do with the really small scraps? Ones that are too small to make things with. I have a drawer full. Uh, I keep them in a plastic bag. <laughs> you can use them for stuffing and that is actually what I'm saving them for. I so, Several people have suggested to me that I make a tailor's ham and stuff it with that. Uh, other people have said to stuff plushies, amigurumis with them. You could uh, make a pillow or stuff your pillows with them. But if none of that is an option, you can always recycle the fabric if that is an option where you live. We have clothing recycling bins on the street, but if you don't have those, I know that H&M has a fabric recycling system in place. What do you do when you don't like your final product? Um, that hasn't happened a lot. It has happened a couple of times. Honestly, when I don't like my finished product, I usually just end up not wearing the item. And I think that's a bit of a waste. I am planning at some point to do a video where I go back to my old projects and make them better. So I, I think that could be really fun and a good learning process for me and maybe some of you guys. But that is the great thing about something you've made yourself. You can always go back and rework it and make it work a little bit better once you have a little bit more emotional distance from the project. Have you ever done a French seam and been satisfied with the product? Yes, I did a French seam once and I remember saying back then that this is now how, that this is now how I was going to finish all of my seams because I absolutely loved it. Um, I did a French seam on my apron it turned out great, I absolutely adore it, and I've never done it since. <laughs> I've kind of just forgotten about it, to be honest, but uh, I am planning on doing more French seams because I'm gonna have to do French seams on my wedding dress because it is gonna be part partially see-through, I'm gonna be using lace, and I think French seams would be the best way to finish, you know, the parts that are completely lacy and see-through so that you don't have raw edges anywhere. That is a little bit terrifying, but I might have to do them again. I definitely would like to do them more often because they are great. Let's hope for more French seams in the future. <laughs> Have you ever made a quilt? No, I have no interest in quilting at the moment, I have to admit. It's just not something that appeals to me. I really enjoy making clothing, designing clothing, um, and yeah, quilting is very, very different. I don't think that is my cup of tea. Speaking of cups of tea, mine is almost out, and I think this is where I'm gonna end the video, guys. So I want to thank you so much for joining me today for this cup of tea and a nice little chat about sewing. I really hope you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for sending in your questions, guys. If you have any more questions, then please feel free to leave them in the comments below and we can continue this talk down there. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for lots more beauty and lifestyle content and sewing and fashion. If you would like to support me through Patreon or my merch store, there are links in the description box below. Thank you so much for your support. There is another video right there that I think you might also enjoy. You can go watch next. Thank you for watching and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye!